the Timberwolves president of basketball operations, David Collins. Who is he? Tell us exactly about this European Blake Griffin. I don't know. The Milwaukee Bucks select Dirk Nowitzki from Würzburg, Germany. I'm Ricky Rubio. I'm not like anybody else, but... It ain't the end of the world. We're going to see each other again. I mean, I sent him some flowers or some fruit. All right, and now we have on the line Kevin Murphy, uh, wing guard forward from Tennessee Tech. He's uh, coming in as a small school prospect and looking to make it big in the NBA. How's everything going today, Kevin? It's going good. How you doing? I'm doing well today. I appreciate the time. I know you, uh, you're busy out there working out, getting ready for the NBA draft. Uh, so you're out right now, you're out in Vegas, or are you getting ready for a team workout? What's going on with you today? Uh, right now, I'm basically getting, uh, getting ready for a team workout. I'm actually in Atlanta right now, uh, in my hometown. We got done working out in the gym, actually, and I just uh, get ready for the Denver tomorrow for a workout. So since the, the season ended itself, you, you've you actually gotten yourself over to the NBA Draft Combine and had a pretty impressive showing there. And then now you are going out and doing some team workouts. So what have you been doing since the NBA Draft Combine as far as workouts and getting ready for the draft? Uh, basically, I don't have workouts since the Combine. I went to, uh, once I got done with the, um, the Combine, I went out to uh, support them. Uh, for the trailblazers, and I just got back to Atlanta uh, last last night. So I've actually been in the gym, you know, getting a lot of stocks up. So I'm going to look back and track of December again tomorrow. So basically, I just got workouts into the draft, really. So how have them workouts been going for you? You feeling pretty confident with what you've been doing for the teams? Uh, once I got past my first one, I feel like I've been doing great. I just kind uh, like how the workouts uh, come about and stuff, how they go about doing the workouts. I just feel confident with all of them right now. I feel like I'm just a lot. just going to be workouts showing these things what I can do. Yeah, talk about that, the the initial nerves for a second. I mean, you know, if you're Anthony Davis and you're going number one, you have nothing to be nervous about. Right. But, you know, for everybody else, you're jockeying for position. What is it like with that first initial workout and just getting out there in front of NBA executives and teams, the, you know, people you've been watching on TV for years? Right. It was kind of crazy at first. It was just like, uh, like, my, like my first workout, it was just uh, third. And I was kind of nervous, but I didn't know what to expect. Like, I ain't, I wasn't used to a lot of, like, a lot of important people watching me play, play basketball. But once I got in the workout, about 30 minutes to 20 minutes to work out and stuff, I just felt like I was just playing basketball. That's what I love to do. So there's no need, no pressure, no matter who watches. I just got, got used to it and started start playing on uh, the game I love, basically. Yeah, and I mean, it, and we talked about this before is, you know, you're not used to working out in front of all these, like you said, the, the important decision maker people. You know, you came slightly recruited, you know, not not a lot of schools were looking at you coming out of high school. You landed at Tennessee Tech. I, what brought you to Tennessee Tech versus maybe going to a local school out there in Georgia where you're from? Uh, it was just, they were highly um, recruiting me, basically, like, throughout, like, throughout high school. My, my junior year, they were recruiting me hard. And, like, um, in high school, I didn't qualify. Early, and my grades, like my grades, went up far early enough. So, uh, I had to qualify in the late, and they was the only school that stayed on me through that whole process. Like every other school dropped off. As soon as I qualified, I had like other schools calling, like other bigger schools calling me, but I felt loyal. Little Tennessee Tech, so I chose there. You know, so I can't complain right now. I'm at the point where I'm at now. So it's been all right. And so within your your four years at Tennessee Tech, coming from a small school, it's it's obviously a lot harder to get that recognition and get your name out there uh this year you actually had it was kind of ironic i was looking at it you had your worst game of the season you shot one for 16 against the same team where you had probably the best game in college this past year where you went 16 for 21 with 50 points talk about those kind of big games this senior year you, you had some good games against murray state again you know the 50 point game you had earlier in the year were you trying to make a name for yourself for the nba draft or did everything just kind of come together your senior year Really, I wasn't like, like when I got into college, my whole goal was I was trying to get to the NBA. You know, I had people telling me that I wasn't going to make it from a small school. And you know, they told me that, they told me that it kind of like just fueled my fire, basically. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, like somebody tell me I can't do something that means I, I'm going to work hard to try to do it just because they said I can't do it. You know, I, I've just been working hard every year trying to trying to make a name for myself. Like, I, 
honestly, I came out pretty big. Like, my senior year, you know, my senior year helped me out a lot with them, you know, big games that I had. But I wasn't really trying to make a name. I, like, I was trying to make a name my whole college career, basically. So, you know. Yeah, and it just all, it seemed like it came together this year. I mean, you were a 20-point scorer. You were out there, you know, getting about five rebounds a game. You are shooting really well from three, which I think was big. What What are some of the things you did between your junior and senior year that elevated your game this past year to becoming the player you were? You were. Were you working on specific things this past summer? Uh, I wasn't. I really wasn't working on nothing specific. I got. I know I got a lot of stops. So I was basically in the gym every day to try to protect my game, like what I had, like protect my craft. I wasn't doing nothing. I haven't been doing like the past summer. I've been in college. I was in the gym all day. Been a gym rat. Yeah. Is that something you think that's really important for for the smaller school prospects? Oh yeah, I think that's really important. Like you gotta, like coming from a small school, you have to want, you know, you have to, like have the entire thing to be ready for the for the next season. You have to want to work out. You have to want to do everything. Get yourself better. Cause ain't nobody gonna push you like that. Really, you gotta push yourself. Yeah, when you when you come in and you're not ranked in the top 150 out of high school, do you think that puts guys? at a disadvantage, you know, for example, like the, the rivals and the ESPN recruitings, do you think that puts you guys at a disadvantage initially coming into to college? Because all the NBA guys are looking at is the top 150 list and then the guys that they're told about. Do you think that puts you guys down to start and you got to work your way up? Uh, I would say yes and no. I would say yes just because of, like, the uh, publicity. Like, everybody talks about the top 150. And I say no just because, like, if you're not ranked in the 150, it makes you want to you know, if that makes that player want to get better like me, it makes me want to get better. I, I want to be, you know what I'm saying? So I just, I just kept working. Like, like, I knew I could play with these top top 10 guys that was coming out, you know, so I just had to just show everybody. Yeah, and then last year was actually pretty interesting as you had, I don't know if you're from the same general areas then, but they're from Georgia themselves, but you had Marshawn Brooks and Andrew Goudlock come out of Georgia, both of them very low rated, you know, not recruited highly, both of them in the NBA making impacts for their respective teams. Are those kind of stories and those kind of things inspirations for you to, to make it to the next level? Yeah, yeah. That's all inspiration for me. Like, basically, like, I, was, I actually played my son Brooks High School, I think, uh, my, my sophomore year, we actually played a big deal, but he played for Tucker. So I, well, I kind of, like, know his game a lot, really, you know what I'm saying? So I've been watching him all throughout college 15 years. He just he just tore college itself. I think he did a, a paid job in college. So I just try to follow that. When I see him make it, I want to make it just like he did, you know. Now, with your game specifically, to, to kind of focus on you again, small school prospects. So, I mean, the right people know who you are, but not everybody knows your game very well. What are some parts of your game that you think are not highlighted, some, some strengths that you have that you don't think people talk about enough, some things that you know you can do on the court? Uh, my ability. Um, a lot of people say, see me coming from Tennessee Tech and me scoring, taking a lot of shots. They say, like, being a uh, volume shooter, a uh, volume shooter, they might say. I just think my passing ability is just very underrated. It's just coming from college because I think I'm coming from a spot like you know, I, had to, I had to score a lot of points for us to even uh, dip in Tinder, basically. So I know just my role, but I love passing ball. Uh, I do that a lot, and that's you know, just what I just know to do. Yeah, and you were one of the top assist guys on your team, and then obviously, like you said, scoring came out of just the need. You know, the team needed you to put up those 20 points a game, and it almost got you guys into the NCAA tournament with what you were doing this past year. Uh, with your game, I, your size, you're kind of in between. W would you say you're more of an, an NBA shooting guard or more of an NBA small forward, a combo? Where do you think you fit at the next level? Uh, I say I'm a shooting guard. I never considered myself a small forward. They, they labeled me that at, 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 in college because I was – like one of the top guards on the team, so he put me a small forward. But I, I consider myself a shooting guard all my life, so that's what I did in the NBA. I think. So being that you know, seeing yourself as a shooting guard at the next level, and that's how you've always played your game. They just you know, you're labeled that because you were the bigger guy on the court. Would who would have you patterned your game off of? Over the years, like as you were coming up, did you pattern your game off of anybody? You know, currently in the NBA, or maybe in the past in the NBA. Currently, I say Marshawn Brooks. Like me and him, I think we have like a similar type of game. If you ask me, like we, we can both score in bunches score from anywhere. Uh, you know, shoot three, uh, take drive, mid range, all this. I think I can pair myself well to him, basically. And I say uh, Jamal Crawford too. Like, I just like his hands and offense, his ability to score the ball too. So I, 
talking so much to the boat. Yeah. And so what are you hearing from, and I don't want you to go into too much detail because I don't want to you know, let the cat out of the bag with you, obviously, but what are you hearing from NBA teams as far as your game? Are they telling you specific things you need to work on or giving you some good advice after these workouts? A lot of them, uh, they're giving me good advice. Basically just saying, like, I have the talent. I have the ability to play in the league. It's, it's just um, based on me right now, how, how hard I'm working out, how hard I'm working to play in the league. Basically, they all saying that I can make it. I got, we got to uh, keep working with what I've been doing all my life. Now, with the NBA draft coming up, it's uh, 10, 11 days from now. It's coming up here pretty soon. What are, What's the game plan for Kevin Murphy? Are you going to potentially be at the draft, or, or do you got something set up? What are you going to be doing on draft night? Uh, really, I mean, if I get invited to the draft, I love to go, go to the draft, but, but, but really, I just – I just want to spend time, uh, sit at home and watch some people with my family, you know, a couple of friends over, just, just enjoying that time with, with my family that I'm going to have. So I'll probably be at home on the 20 acres watching it. You're not going to be one of the, the the draft crashers, you know, buy a ticket, hang out in the crowd, and go surprise David Stern when you hear your name called? Nah, nah, I ain't, I ain't, I ain't going to be that guy. I'm just going to watch it at home and just be excited. Well, I hear my name called. Well, first round, second round, it don't matter. I just want to hear my name called. So. Oh, come on, that's what Marshawn did. He was sitting right behind me when he was in the crowd. He, he he went and crashed the draft and, you know, went up there when David Stern called his name and went up there and got his hand shook. But, uh, no, best of luck to you in these workouts. Uh, obviously, best of luck come NBA draft time. For people that don't know, I mean, you're, you're one of the best wings in the class, whether they want to call you a shooting guard or a small forward. And I definitely think you have a bright future ahead of you. Thanks for the time, Kevin. Thank you. But I also felt very strongly that once the 14-year-old hit the dance with us, we were dead. We were, we were just dead. There was no way, you know, this league has a habit, I'm just going to say habit, of producing some pretty incredible storylines.